Welcome everybody to Olivia Connects. My name is Olivia Gudanitz. I'm Ian Ashworth. I'm the Director of Program Development. So whenever I've thought of service dogs, I've thought of ones that help the blind or the deaf, exactly. which I'm sure is pretty yeah. common for most people. Yeah. But you mentioned there are seven programs, so let's just go, quickly go through the mm -hmm. programs and how I guess somebody can apply for that and how long the wait time is for okay. an application. Yes, for sure. So you're absolutely right. So um, uh, Guide Dogs Helping Visually Impaired People has been around probably for nearly 100 years now. Um, and that's what everybody knows and recognizes. Um, that's how this organization started. So um, back then they started wanting uh, to help visually impaired people in Canada. So that was the, the organization, how it started off. Um, then it did progress to training hearing dogs um, okay. for people that are deaf and hard of hearing. Um, and from there then the next program was a service dog program helping people with physical challenges. So helping people in wheelchairs, power chairs, um, those dogs retrieve things off the floor, they will tug open doors, things that's like that. That's quite common these days. And, and, that, and that's yeah. become more common, absolutely. Um, because people have seen you know, how well that works and how much help you know, a, a dog can be. Um, then the other programs we do, we actually have a seizure response dog program there. Right. Um, and that started um, you know, a, about 11 years ago when I, when I first joined. We started a seizure response dog program to help people with epilepsy. And those dogs get to bark for help. If somebody has a seizure, that's the dog's cue to bark for help. So if people are living by themselves or if they're out in the public and they have a seizure, um, there's a lot of stigma attached around that, unfortunately. And it can be quite scary for, for the general public or people seeing somebody having a seizure. Yeah. So having a dog there that is, is there, is attached to the person, is, is barking for help and also has the harness on that says seizure response, can bring really positive attention oh, sure. uh, to help somebody. So that, that's been a great program. Um, then we actually, uh, 10 years ago this year, we started our autism assistance dog program mm -hmm. that has been proved to be our biggest program. Okay. Um, so that's helping children uh, with autism spectrum disorder. Is there a certain um, age like you have to be in order to yes. have a service dog? Yes, yeah, so for, for that program, the children are between three and 12 years old. Okay. Um, and we've, we were totally flooded um, with applications for that program. It's been huge. And so unfortunately at the moment, we've actually had to close our wait list at the moment oh, wow. because we've got over 160 children waiting for dogs. Um, and and our, our autism assistance dogs help in so many ways. Um, a lot of children that are flight risks, um, they'll, they'll run, they'll bolt, they'll have no concept of danger. And what we do, we attach um, the child to, to the dog by like a safety line to the harness. Mm -hmm. If the child goes to run, the parent or the caregiver can just tell the dog, halt, and they'll drop. And we tend to use the bigger Labradors for that program. Yeah, they need to and be strong. They do, <laughs> yeah. and, they, and they, just, they just lie down and they hold the child safely. And, and the child can't sort of physically get anywhere. But the great thing about it is it's all very passive. So, you know, I know as a parent, if, if your child goes to run, you will like want to grab it and sort yeah, of come yeah. back. With the dog, it just lies there and the child can't, can't move. Right, so it's not like it's a tug of war. It's that's just exactly very... exactly it. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to let you go. I'm going to keep you safe. Okay, that's wonderful. And then the parent can like redirect the child. And once, once they're holding the handle of the harness, then the parent can say, okay, forward, and off we go again. So that's a massive thing. Yeah. Um, it really helps uh, children on the spectrum as well, dealing with everyday stresses. So a lot of children um, with autism, uh, with the challenges of autism, really can't face public situations. They can get very overwhelmed um, in a mall, in a shop, in a store. Um, that can really be too much. Yeah. So what we do, we actually train the dogs to hug. Aww. So they'll jump, jump across the child yeah. and lie right across them and there's that combination of like deep pressure which helps mm -hmm. but also the companionship as well oh, and that's sure. a huge, huge help. So that's a, that's a fabulous program and, and that's, that's the program that I'm most involved with at the moment. Oh cool. Um, and then there's a support program. Then we have the support program that we've just started um, and that's for um, uh, organisations that help people in crisis. Right. So victim services units, um, crisis centres, um, you know, first responders, things like that. So any organisation 
that uh, wants a dog to help with those sort of critical situations. Um, and we've just started, we've just placed one dog in that program at the moment with um, the local uh, police um, victim services unit and, uh, and that dog's out working and helping. Um, and then our last program is our Diabetic Alert dog mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. So obviously we all know dogs have a great sense of smell. So they've been used for years, you know, detecting drugs and explosives and things like that. Um, so it was figured out, well, people with diabetes, when their blood sugar changes, their scent changes too. So their sweat changes, their breath uh, smell changes, yeah. and dogs can pick up on that. That's so fascinating It's, to it's me. amazing, it really is. And so what we've trained the dogs to do is when somebody's um, blood sugar level drops to a critical level, they, the dogs can smell the difference in their breath. So we train the dogs then to detect that and respond to that by pouring their, their client saying, you know, come on, you need to get some sugar now. Yeah. And, uh, and responding, so that's been a, that's been a huge, huge help as well. Yeah, it's I, fascinating. Yeah, all the things I can't that a even can do. Yeah. wrap my brain around yeah. it. It's wonderful. It really is. So they're pretty remarkable. They're amazing. They really are. So once somebody applies, does everybody hear back? Are there people that are rejected in the programs? Well, well how does that work? Whenever, whenever anybody applies. Um, we have sort of certain criteria. So obviously, you know, with the autism program, for example, it's, it's the age range between three and 12, right. and the person has to have a diagnosis of whatever it is, you know, that program that they're applying. So for example, with our Diabetic Alert Dog program, it's type one diabetes, but also another part of the criteria is that they don't feel when their blood sugar level is dropping. Right. A lot of people with diabetes can actually right. really manage it quite well. The, the people that we help can't. It's, it's what you used to call brittle diabetes, okay. um, but now um, it's like a hypoglycemic unawareness. They're not aware when their blood sugar drops until it's almost too late. So, so that's the sort of group of people we help. And similarly in our other programs as well, we need certain criteria um, depending on each program. And they have, there has to be a medical sort of diagnosis for that. Right, because you need a doctor's note. And I also saw on the application list that you can't have any other pets in the home? With some of our programs, um, unfortunately not. So with our seizure response dog program, with our hearing dog program, and our diabetic alert dog program, the dogs are really working to somebody um, very, very, very closely. Those are programs where the dog isn't really responding to a command, they're responding to a cue from their, their owner. So say you have a seizure, the dog is responding to that. Um, if you're deaf and hard of hearing and somebody knocks on the door, the dog is responding to that. So with our other programs, um, the handler is sort of usually giving commands, you know? So fetch or forward or tugs, you know, whatever the command is. Mm -hmm. But in those three programs, the dog really needs to be very, very intense and bonded with the person. It has to be a very, very special connection yeah. um, so that they can respond to those sort of crisis moments. If there's another dog in the house, that can disrupt that. So dogs, you know, obviously love to play with people, but they also you know, more so <laughs> like to play with each other. Yeah. And if that's happening, they won't be as focused on their person to help with those sort of things. So it's just those programs. Um, the other programs, the um, uh, canine vision program, the service dog program, the autism assistance dog program, we do allow other well-behaved pet dogs in the house. Well, that's wonderful.